and Gray CDC. That's it. We don't need any other any other materials because what we're trying to do is um, is is tie a representation of a very small mayfly. Most betas mayflies are going to run you in the 18 to 20, maybe 22 fly size. And one of the problems I had when I first started to tie, and most people when they tie, start tying, uh, the big problem they have is trying to figure out how on the Sam Hill do I tie a size 20 mayfly. And what you have there, the ones that I passed out, one's, one's a 18 and the other's a 20. I didn't bring any 20 hooks, but I did bring 18 and 16. For those who are afraid to go all the way to an 18, you can go to a 16. I've got a board. But the fly is, is actually very, very simple. Um, thread is the body. The tail and the wing is a little bit of CVC. And when I say a little bit, you'll see what I mean when I go tie this one. You can. Uh, this is a TM Co. Uh, 67, uh, 3769, which is a wet fly hook. Now, the gentleman who developed these two patterns, his name is Frank Johnson, and I send you that front sheet on it. Frank's been a guide out of um, Sheridan, Wyoming for probably 25 years. These are guide flies. These are the kind of flies your guys tie up real quick, so when they got to meet you in the morning, they can have a dozen of them, and it's not going to take them two hours to tie a dozen flies. That's the whole point. But on the other hand, Frank's theory is that he's still trying to figure out and get people to give him a true understanding of what the word emerger means. The insects emerge, but what is an emerger? He likes to use the word transitional. It's between a nymph and a dry fly, and something in between is what he calls transitional, not necessarily an emerger. So this fly, and Luis, he's not here, but he had asked me, you know, how well do you have to tie these? These are fishing flies. These are not meant to be tied so that they go in fly planes. So if they're a little sloppy, it doesn't hurt a thing. The whole point is the fly creates movement, creates silhouette, and it creates size. That's the real key to these flies. So what we're going to do uh, to start this, and what we do is I'll tie one and then we'll tie one together. We start our thread one eye length behind, anchor our thread. You can see how little and small the CDC is. It's pretty fine. We don't need a lot. We're going to use some of it to be the wing. Okay? We're going to use a couple of these lower fibers down here, which would normally be tossed away. You're only going to take two or three for an 18 for the tail. You don't need very many. In fact, I got way too many there. You can just see. There we go. That's all we're looking at. Just a couple of little wisps. Okay? We're going to tie that in right on top, touching turns of thread all the way back, and we stop at the point of the hook and trim our tail. That's it. There's the tail. That's all there is to the tail. Now the rest of the body is going to be thread being grafted forward back to where we started, right where we started our thread. Clip that off. Okay, we come right back to where we tie, start on our thread. That's the body and the tail. We're done. So if you have trouble with tiny flies, guess what? You don't have to worry about trying to get the right amount of dumbing and all the rest of the other pieces that would normally go with it. For the wing, we're going to take my CDC feather. I'm going to grab it by the butts. I'm going to gather it into a wing. Hold it in my left hand because this wing is going to be facing over the eye. I'm going to take two turns. 
Okay, I'm going to retreat it until my wing is the amount, same distance as it is from my tie-in point to the bend. And you can see what I'm using for my gauge, right? It's always in my hand, so I don't have to go grab another gauge. So there's my distance. There it is. That's a little long. Shorten it up. Check it one more time. Just a tiny bit more. There, my wing set for the distance. Okay, take a couple more turns. Clip off the excess. Cover that up to create a thorax with thread. Pull my wing up. Put a little dam in front. Create a head. And then either a finishing knot. I use a hand whip. You can use your hand whip tool. You can use half hitches. If you're going to use half hitches, then you're going to need to use head cement. If you're not going to use uh, head cement, then a whip finish will work. Now, Frank prefers a pair. Uh, he likes two, three turn whip finishes. That's his style, not mine. He thinks that's all you need. Um, I just do a five or six turn. We're finished, and as far as I'm concerned, that's all I need. But if you're going to half hitch it, put two half hitches on, a small drop of head cement, you're done. There's a size 18 blue wing olive. Yeah. That's it. It's super simple. Now, the CDC will help float it in softer water. Softer meaning it's not moving at a great rate. You don't have a lot of action in it. So it'll float it on softer water. If it gets submerged and it's laying in the film, it's just as good. If it sinks below the film and it goes down an inch, it's still just as good. So this fly works subsurface, in the film, and floating. And because there's so little on it, to get it to float again, you pick it up, a couple of false casts to dry your CDC, drop it down gently, and you're fishing all over again. Not a tough fly to do. Okay? Um, and the whole point is, is simple. Um, you saw how, and I tied this slowly. Think about if you're trying to knock these out, how quick you can turn, turn on a fly. That's why it's a great guide fly. But on the other hand, it's a really good fly to fish with. Because blue wing olive, especially in cloudy, drizzly days, are a great fly. Now remember, blue wing olive, each, each, level, each time the blue wing olives hatch, between spring and fall, each progressive hatch becomes smaller and smaller in size. So the first hatch maybe an 18, by the time you get into December, you can be down to a 22. Okay? So, this is the kind of fly that you can tie down to a 22 if you thought you wanted to do it. Now, the key to this is, and the reason this thing doesn't fall apart, if you notice, I stop my body right at the point of the hook. The reason for that is the whole bend and everything is the only thing holding on the fish. You're not tearing up your fly every time you catch a fish. More often than not, as your flies get further and further around the bend, as you go to remove the fly from the fish, with whatever tool you're using, you usually tend to tear up the fly. In this case, you don't. Plus, even though I'm using on this one, this is a size 18 hook, that's a 20 body. So if I tie the body like this on a size 20 hook, the fly's a 22. So I actually tie a small fly on a larger gape hook, and he likes to tie them on uh, wet fly hooks, because first off, a wet fly hook shaft is shorter than a standard dry fly. It's almost a one extra short hook. So you're starting out with a shorter hook and a larger gape to start with. And then when you tie it halfway onto the hook, you've got even a smaller, plus it's a stronger hook than it would be a standard light wire dry fly. That's his whole theory behind this particular fly. And the other one, which is the caddis, uh, the caddis we're going to go to. So we've got the pupil and the student. Why he gave them those names, I don't know. He just gave them those names. So, um, super simple fly. That's why, you know, this is...